I've just bought every single iPhone Pro Max brand new. Well, except for the 12. The 12 is Apple certified refurbished and Apple claims it's as good as new, but we'll see about that. I hope you're as excited as I am to see all these iPhones side by side and to really find out how the flagship iPhone experience has evolved over time. The iPhone 11 Pro Max was released in 2019 and it was the first iPhone to be called Pro. Now, when I was recording this video, I sent this picture to my friend Melissa and her response was, is that the 11 in the chunky box? Ha <laughs> ha. And I do think it's funny because at this point, we're so used to the sleek, low profile boxes that newer iPhones come in. And this one is indeed very chunky. And that's because in the box, we have a iPhone, documentation, a USB-C power adapter, ear pods with a lightning connector and a lightning to USB-C cable. Even after five years, I still think the design holds up really well. The rounded polished stainless steel structural band and matte glass back really give it a premium look. The texture glass also feels really good. And the midnight green color is still one of my favorite, but it's not all peachy. The polished stainless steel was and still is a fingerprint magnet and feels somewhat slippery in the hand. So this is definitely an iPhone you wanna slap a case on. When first doing on this iPhone, I was reminded of how far we've come. While the 11 Pro Max was the first iPhone with a Super Retina XDR display, it's certainly showing its age. Indoors, the max brightness is sufficient, but outdoors, I feel like I could definitely use some more brightness. I remember when I originally got the 11 Pro Max in 2019, I was also sad to see Apple replace 3D Touch with Haptic Touch. 3D Touch was a very cool technology first introduced in the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. It used pressure sensors inside the display panel to detect how much force a user applied when interacting with the display. It enabled new gestures such as peek and pop and had really satisfying haptic feedback. Apple ultimately phased out 3D Touch on all their iPhones and replaced it with Haptic Touch, which is basically a long press gesture with haptic feedback. It's not quite the same experience, but I can see why Apple faced out 3D Touch. 3D Touch likely made the display panels more complicated and more expensive. I imagine it also being thicker, leaving less room for the battery. Speaking of the battery, let's talk about the internals of the 11 Pro Max. Inside, we have the A13 Bionic chip, which is a seven nanometer system on a chip. Without getting too technical, the seven nanometer number refers to the transistor technology inside the chip. A lower nanometer number corresponds to increased transistor density, which usually results in a chip that is faster, uses less power, and generates less heat. Definitely stick around to see how the A13 Bionic chip measures up against the newer ones. It's pretty mind-blowing. The iPhone 11 Pro Max also came with four gigs of RAM, which in today's Pro iPhone standards feels low, but it is actually the same amount of RAM that comes in the iPhone SE, Apple's most affordable iPhone. For the past week, I've been using this iPhone 11 Pro Max running iOS 17.0.1, which is the latest version of iOS at the time of making this video. And I must admit, I was pleasantly surprised by the performance. It feels like I'm using a respectable mid-tier iPhone. And if I wasn't used to Apple's latest and greatest, I don't think I would have many complaints. At times, apps load a little bit slower than I would have liked, but otherwise things are snappy and responsive. The fact that a 2019 model year iPhone can run the latest OS and provides a satisfactory experience is I think a testament to iPhone's longevity. But that's not the only great thing about this iPhone. When it first came out, iPhone 11 Pro Max also landed on the number one spot on Consumer Reports smartphone rankings. This was the first time that Apple beat Samsung for the top spot. And this was mainly because of the significantly improved battery life and the remarkable new camera system iPhone 11 Pro Max was the first iPhone with an ultra wide camera. I remember being so excited about this new 13 mm focal length on iPhone. It opened up a whole new world of possibilities for architecture, landscape, and creative photography. And for video, iPhone finally became a viable tool for vlogging. I know that travel vloggers especially prefer using an ultra wide lens to include as much of the environment in their video as possible. Apple really came out swinging with this 11 Pro Max because it was also the first iPhone to feature night mode. Night mode allows you to capture photos when the camera detects a low light environment. Depending on how dark the environment is, the camera can take anywhere from instantaneously to a few seconds to capture an image. While I don't take a lot of low light photos, night mode has definitely come in handy whenever I do. But just like every photo or video we take can't always be a banger, 
Apple's marketing team sometimes also misses the mark. And they definitely did with marketing this one camera feature. If you know what it is, leave a comment below. Yup, slow fees. Even after five years, I still don't like that word. Slow fees was essentially Apple's marketing term for slow-mo video on the front through that camera. I can't recall the last time I used slow-mo on the front camera and I also can't imagine using it in the future. But despite the minor slip up with slow fees, iPhone 11 Pro Max was the beginning of the next chapter for iPhone. One in which iPhone essentially becomes a camera that happens to make phone calls. This new focus on iPhone's camera system was solidified even more when Apple introduced the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the photographer's iPhone. Before we unbox this, quick story time. For this video, I really wanted to have every single iPhone Pro Max brand new and in their signature color. How hard can it be, right? I kid you not, it took me like two weeks to get them all. Ultimately, I managed to get every iPhone Pro Max brand new, except the 12. So I get the next best thing, I think. Apple sells certified refurbished iPhones, which according to their website, come with a new battery, a new outer shell, and a one year warranty. It also comes in a brand new white box with new accessories and a pretty nice discount. I was also able to purchase Apple Care Plus to extend the warranty and to cover any accidental damage. So theoretically, this iPhone should be as good as new, right? Let's find out. If it weren't for the white box, I honestly don't think I'd be able to tell the difference between a new and this Apple certified refurbished iPhone. This iPhone looks pristine and it even comes with a protective display film, just like a new iPhone would. If you're trying to save some money and don't mind getting the best iPhone from last year, Apple certified refurbished looks like a pretty good deal. And for those of you wondering, this is the original box the 12 Pro Max came in. It definitely looks much slimmer than the iPhone 11 Pro Max box. And that's because Apple no longer included a power adapter and AirPods in the box. At the time, it was a somewhat controversial move to not include these basic items in the box. But as Apple explained during their October 13 keynote, it is all part of their efforts to achieve their ambitious environmental goals to reduce waste, to promote reuse, and to make all their products carbon neutral by 2030. Despite launching in the midst of a global pandemic, many tech companies, including Apple struggling to acclimate to remote work, and electronics manufacturers being plagued by a global chip shortage, iPhone 12 Pro Max was still loaded with major hardware and software upgrades. On the design side, we have a new squared stainless steel design instead of the 11's rounded design. Because of the square design, I do think it is easier to hold and less slippery. I know many people that prefer the rounded edges, however, so I guess it's more of a personal preference. While the squared edges are definitely noticeable in day-to-day -day use, I'm not sure anyone would notice the display upgrades of the 12 Pro Max. There were two of them. First, the display now featured ceramic shield, which Apple claims is tougher than any other smartphone glass and offers four times better drop protection than previous iPhones. So not really noticeable unless you drop your iPhone frequently. And second, the display size was bumped up to 6.7 inches compared to the 6.5 inches of the 11 Pro Max. So all in all, minor upgrades. For major display upgrades, you really wanna stick around for the 13 Pro Max. Also, speaking of major upgrades, the internals of the iPhone 12 Pro Max offered three significant and very noticeable upgrades. First, we had the A14 Bionic chip, which is a five nanometer system on a chip. Compared with 6 gigs of RAM compared to the 4 gigs of RAM on the 11 Pro Max, iPhone 12 Pro Max benchmarked on average 21% faster for the CPU and 20% faster for the GPU compared to the 11 Pro Max. Benchmarks of course don't translate one to one to real world experience. However, using the 12 Pro Max running iOS 17.0.1, I definitely noticed an increased speed over the 11 Pro Max, especially when launching apps and using the camera. The second major upgrade and arguably much more noticeable is the introduction of 5G cellular connectivity. iPhone 11 Pro Max was equipped with 4G LTE, which theoretically can offer speeds up to 100 megabits per second. 5G can offer speeds up to one gigabits per second, which is 10 times faster than 4G LTE. That is of course on paper. Running a casual speed test at my home, iPhone 12 Pro Max with 5G was three to four times faster than iPhone 11 Pro Max with 4G LTE. So based on my rather unscientific test, the 12 Pro Max performed noticeably better with loading websites, downloading podcasts, streaming YouTube videos, 
or uploading documents to Google Drive. The final major upgrade for iPhone 12 Pro Max internals was MagSafe. MagSafe is Apple's proprietary technology to magnetically snap wireless chargers and other convenient accessories to the back of a supported iPhone. The magnets have a really satisfying snap, and the software also has a fun animation and sound to go along with it. In hindsight, iPhone 12 Pro Max was a major leap for the flagship iPhone experience, and that's not even considering the remarkable upgrades to the Pro camera system. First, take a look at the size difference. The camera bump and each of the camera lenses are significantly bigger on the 12 Pro Max. The camera lenses also protrude more. And this trend continues for every iPhone Pro Max that follows. Every year, the cameras get bigger and better. First introduced on the iPad Pro, we now also have the LiDAR scanner on the 12 Pro Max. The LiDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging Scanner, emits a laser to measure distances of surrounding objects. It works indoors and outdoors and in a variety of lighting conditions, including very dark environments. And it comes with several noticeable benefits. One, it improves the speed and accuracy of autofocus for each camera, especially in low light conditions. Two, it improves augmented reality experiences by having a faster and more accurate understanding of an environment. And three, it enables night mode portraits. In addition to the LiDAR scanner, Apple also introduced a feature that really makes the 12 the photographer's iPhone. That feature was Apple Pro Raw. By capturing photos in Apple Pro Raw, photographers get the control of shooting in RAW combined with Apple's powerful computational photography. Now, if you don't intend to edit your photos or you're just snapping a quick picture for Instagram, I wouldn't bother shooting in Apple Pro Raw. Apple Pro Raw images can take up to 10 times more storage space on your iPhone compared to a regular photo in JPEG or high format. Apple Pro Raw is really meant for pros or for those of us that really wanna push our creativity. Now, speaking of pros, Apple also introduced a groundbreaking feature for the iPhone filmmakers among us. For the first time on iPhone, filmmakers would now be able to record 10-bit high dynamic range video in 4K up to 60 frames per second. Not only that, but the iPhone 12 Pro Max was the first camera to shoot in Dolby Vision HDR. Not the first phone, the first camera. Now, if a 2020 model year iPhone 12 Pro Max can do that, just imagine the innovation and progress for the 13, 14, and 15 Pro Max. Well, you won't have to imagine for too long. Let's talk about the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the filmmaker's iPhone. Announced in 2021, the iPhone 13 Pro Max took the successful recipe of the 12 Pro Max and made it better in every single way. Well, almost. In one area, it was much worse than the 12 Pro Max but we'll talk about that in a little bit. The unboxing experience was exactly the same as the 12 Pro Max. Slim box, iPhone, cable, and documentation. The signature color of the 13 Pro Max was this beautiful Sierra blue. And here it is next to the 11 and the 12 Pro Max. I can't wait to complete this lineup. The visual design was essentially the same as the 12 Pro Max, but the 13 Pro Max was slightly thicker and unfortunately much heavier, coming in at 240 grams compared to 228 grams for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Fortunately, this is the only major complaint I have about the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, remember how I said that the 12 Pro Max only had minor display upgrades? Well, the 13 Pro Max has one major and one minor display upgrade. For the minor upgrade, we got a bump in the max brightness from 800 nits to 1000 nits. Side by side, the increased max brightness is somewhat noticeable, and viewing the 30 Pro Max display in bright outdoor lighting is modestly improved. But the major update was long awaited and very noticeable, and that is Apple ProMotion technology with variable refresh rates. ProMotion on iPhone 13 Pro Max allowed the display to refresh from 10 Hz all the way to 120 Hz. That meant the new display could update what was displayed as much as 120 times per second. ProMotion also adapts the refresh rate to the content on your display. So if you're watching a 30 FPS video, it'll refresh at 30 Hz. If you're scrolling, it'll refresh at 120 Hz for maximum responsiveness and smoothness. And when reading some text, it'll conserve battery power and refresh at 10 Hz. Once you've used an iPhone with a ProMotion display, I can guarantee you, you'll not wanna go back to one without it. It is very much noticeable in real world use and makes the phone feel so much faster. The ProMotion display on the 13 Pro Max was powered by Apple's A15 Bionic chip, which is a 5 nanometer system on a chip. 
Paired with 6 gigs of RAM, the iPhone 30 Pro Max benchmarked on average 16% faster for the CPU and 25% faster for the GPU compared to the 12 Pro Max. A silver lining to the increased weight of the 13 Pro Max was that it now came with a bigger battery and a remarkable improvement in battery life, up to 40% longer battery life than the 12 Pro Max. These new internals combined with a ProMotion display made iPhone 13 Pro Max a must upgrade for many Apple Pro users and super fans. And that's not even including the upgrades to the cameras. Apple's trend of bigger camera bumps, lenses, and sensors certainly continued with the 13 Pro Max. At this point, the camera bump took up half the width of Apple's biggest iPhone. With these bigger cameras came improved photos and videos. The most noticeable improvements were, one, a more shallow depth of field, getting closer to that dedicated mirrorless and DSLR camera look, and two, much better low light performance, up to 220% better for the wide camera and up to 92% better for the ultra wide. The ultra wide camera also unlocked a neat new feature. Macro photos and videos. Macro mode on the 13 Pro Max allowed you to get really close to an object and capture details that were simply impossible to get on the 12 Pro Max. It's a very cool feature, especially if you're into nature and creative photography. But remember how I said that the iPhone 13 Pro Max was the filmmaker's iPhone? Well, that's because of two major upgrades to video recording on the 13 Pro Max. The first major upgrade was cinematic video. Cinematic video uses computational videography and depth information to add a shallow depth of field and focus transitions to your video. Because the video stores depth information, you can also change the depth of field effect after recording the video. While this feature might seem gimmicky to some, it allows iPhone to do something that other cameras simply cannot do. Being able to focus rack and post can be a creative superpower for filmmakers. Note that on iPhone 13 Pro Max, cinematic video was limited to 1080p at 30fps. The second major upgrade is ProRes video recording. ProRes is a video format that was introduced by Apple in 2007. Now, without going full video geek mode, ProRes is a video format that is widely used by filmmakers because it allows you to capture high quality video that is incredibly easy to edit and color grade. It retains the image quality much better than the more common H.264 and H.265 codecs. But that comes at a price. It is able to retain much higher quality because it uses less compression than the more common video codecs. So it takes up a whole lot of space on your iPhone. So much so that an iPhone 30 Pro Max with 128 gigs of storage was limited to shooting 1080p 30fps ProRes video. To shoot 4K 30fps, you'd need an iPhone with at least 256 gigs of storage. You don't have to be a camera nerd to realize that these iPhone cameras are getting better every single year. Definitely stick around for a side-by-side -side camera comparison later in this video. While the iPhone 13 Pro Max certainly felt like a fan favorite, the iPhone 14 Pro Max was really a bag of mixed feelings for me. On paper, it had a lot of remarkable upgrades, but the real-world experience didn't really feel that much different than that of the 13 Pro Max. In some ways, it was actually worse. And apparently, I wasn't the only one with that experience. But let's start at the beginning. Launched in 2022, iPhone 14 Pro Max came in four colors. The familiar silver and gold, and a brand new space black, and a subtle deep purple. Aside from new colors, the design remained largely the same. Stainless steel band with a textured matte glass back. In a 2021 investor report by JP Morgan Chase, it was rumored that the Pro 14 models would feature a new titanium alloy chassis design. I guess they were a year too early. Now, while the hardware design didn't see much change, the display underwent an iconic one. In the months leading up to the iPhone announcement keynote, rumors were going crazy about Apple replacing the iconic notch. Design mockups were first showing a hole punch design, and as we got closer to the announcement, a new eye-shaped cutout design emerged. And I must admit, I wasn't a fan of this eye-shaped cutout in a display, and thank God the rumors weren't entirely accurate. Instead of a static eye-shaped cutout, Apple created what I believe to be a genius software solution to a hardware problem, the Dynamic Island. The Dynamic Island is this really innovative hardware and software feature that turns the cutout for the true depth camera into a pill-shaped interactive display element. The dynamic island bubbles up alerts and notifications and displays live activities. When something bubbles up, you can touch and hold to expand the dynamic island and act on it. 
if two activities are happening at once, the dynamic island splits in two. This is what happens when hardware and software teams come together to harmoniously collaborate to create something that's truly iconic and remarkable. In addition to the dynamic island, Apple also made two noticeable changes to the display. First, they increased the peak outdoor brightness to a whopping 2000 nits, making the display easily visible even in bright sunlight. And second, they brought a feature to iPhone that many Android phones have had for years. Yup, Apple finally introduced an always-on display. The always-on display shows glanceable information so you don't need to pick up or wake up your iPhone. This new always-on display was made possible by a new low power mode which enabled refresh rates as low as 1Hz and improved LTPO technology that allowed for intelligent dimming of the entire lock screen. Apple clearly put in a lot of effort to ensure that the always-on display was as efficient as possible and did not become an excessive battery drain. But that's where my real-world experience differs from what Apple claims in the spec sheets. According to Apple, the 14 Pro Max had the same great battery life as the 13 Pro Max. But having used both of these phones for 12 months each, I can confidently say that the 14 Pro Max had worse battery life than the 13 Pro Max. Battery life is of course affected by a multitude of factors, but it feels like the always on display had a bigger impact on battery life than I would have liked. After using the always on display for a few weeks, I decided to turn it off. Afterwards, I did notice a slight improvement in battery life. Powering all these fancy new display technologies was of course another generation of Apple Silicon. In this case, the A16 Bionic chip, which is a 4 nanometer system on a chip. Paired with 6 gigs of RAM, the iPhone 14 Pro Max benchmarked on average 15% faster for the CPU and 10% faster for the GPU compared to the 13 Pro Max. These don't seem like big bumps in performance, but benchmarks don't tell the entire story. iPhone 14 Pro Max, like every other iPhone Pro Max before it, feels incredibly fast and responsive. At this point in the iPhone Pro Max lineup, it feels like we've hit maturity when it comes to performance. Nobody needs a faster phone. Any performance upgrades are likely used for specific features, such as smooth animations for the dynamic island or power efficiency for the always on display. What we do need more of is bigger and better iPhone cameras. And that's exactly what we got in the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Look at the size of this new Pro camera system. I honestly think we've hit the theoretical limit of camera size on iPhone. Anything more must be comical, right? Well, we'll see. Apple's headlining camera feature for the 14 Pro Max was a new wide camera featuring a 48 megapixel sensor and a new 24 millimeter wide angle focal length. Compared to the 12 megapixel 26 millimeter wide camera on the 13 Pro Max, the iPhone 14 Pro Max made a generational leap for cameras on iPhone. The sensor was 65% larger, which resulted in a more natural shallow depth of field and up to 2x improved low light performance. The ultra wide and telephoto cameras also got an up to 2x and 3x low light improvement for photos respectively. Because of the much larger 48 megapixel sensor on the wide camera, the 14 Pro Max could crop in on the sensor to unlock a new 2x optical zoom for photo and video. The result was essentially two focal lengths in one camera. It also unlocked Apple Pro Raw photos in a ridiculous 48 megapixel resolution. Now, I do have one major gripe with the wide camera on the 14 Pro Max, and that is the minimum focusing distance. While the 13 Pro Max is able to focus on a subject as close as 5.9 inches or 15 centimeters, the 14 Pro Max is able to focus as close as 7.8 inches or 20 centimeters. The 14 Pro Max simply can focus as close to a subject as the 13 Pro Max. And while 2 inches doesn't sound like a lot, it is very much noticeable in day-to-day real-world use. Of course, this wouldn't be a new iPhone Pro Max without major video recording upgrades. With iPhone 14 Pro Max, we could now record cinematic video in 4K up to 30 frames per second compared to the 1080p 30fps on the 13 Pro Max. In this case, the additional processing power of the A16 Bionic really came in handy when it comes to capturing, processing, and storing depth information for cinematic video. Another really cool feature on the 14 Pro Max was Action Mode. Action Mode allows you to capture video up to 2.8K at 60fps with gimbal-like stabilization. It does this by combining optical image stabilization with electronic image stabilization. 
The result is a trade-off between lower resolution and incredibly stable video. With the pro camera system on iPhone 14 Pro Max, there simply wasn't a better time to be a filmmaker or content creator. Well, until now. The iPhone 15 Pro Max, the first iPhone to truly deserve the pro name. It might be difficult to do it justice on camera, but this is the most beautiful iPhone color I have ever seen. This is the natural titanium color. There's also black titanium, white titanium, and blue titanium. The natural titanium definitely looks more gray than Apple shows on their website and marketing materials, but it is better than I could have ever imagined. Not only does it look luxurious, but it feels incredible to hold. And that's mainly because of the brand new titanium design. Instead of the polished stainless steel structural band of the 11, 12, 13, and 14 Pro Max, iPhone 15 Pro Max has a brushed titanium band. I definitely prefer the look, feel, and grip of the new titanium design. It's also less of a fingerprint magnet. However, it does seem prone to smudging and temporary discoloration. On the back, we have what looks like the usual textured matte glass back, but because of a new internal chassis design, it is much easier to be replaced. To repair the glass back of the iPhone 15 Pro Max costs $199 in the US, compared to $549 for the 14 Pro Max. That is a huge win for iPhone repairability. Even though this new iPhone got 5% thicker, it is the lightest iPhone Pro Max ever made, weighing 221 grams or 0.49 pounds. This noticeable weight reduction is all thanks to the titanium, which is strong, durable, and much lighter than stainless steel. Apple's industrial design group really came out swinging with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and they didn't stop there. They also boldly removed the iconic ring silent switch that has been on every single iPhone since the very first one, and replaced it with a new customizable action button. I'm not sure how I feel about this yet because I've used this ring silent switch for the past 10 years. Now, this action button is actually pretty cool and powerful because you can customize what it does when you press it. For example, you can press and hold to switch between ring and silent mode. This is the default action. You can also launch the camera, turn on the flashlight, start a voice memo, turn your phone into a magnifier, launch any shortcut you specify, or activate an accessibility feature. Now, remember how I said the iPhone 15 Pro Max was the first iPhone to deserve the Pro name? Well, that's partially because of this new port. After 11 years of having a lightning port on iPhone, iPhone 15 Pro Max is the first generation to have a USB-C port and to support USB 3. What does that mean? Well, for one, we can finally use the same cable to charge your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. But that's just the beginning of it. The new USB-C port also enables much faster file transfers with speeds up to 10 gigabits per second compared to 480 megabits per second of a lightning port. We can also connect to a 4K HDR external display without any special adapter needed. And to top it off, it can even charge your AirPods or really any other device. I think this is the most design change we've seen in any iPhone Pro Max ever. Now, to contrast that, in the display department, there's only a minor change that you probably won't even notice. And that's thinner bezels. As a fun comparison, look at all these displays from the 11 to the 15. We can see bezels going on a diet, notches getting smaller, and dynamic islands popping up. As an Apple fan, I just want to say how cool it is to see the flagship iPhone experience evolve over time. I create these videos because I really love what I do, and I hope you find them enjoyable and useful. Now, this USB-C port is not the only reason why I believe this is the first iPhone to deserve the pro name. What makes this phone really pro are also the upgraded internals and the new pro camera system. Inside this 15 Pro Max is an all-new A17 Pro chip, which is a state-of-the-art 3 nanometer system on a chip. Apple upgraded everything, including a faster 6-core CPU, a faster 16-core neural engine, and a new 6-core GPU, which has one extra core compared to the 5-core GPU in the 14 Pro Max. This new GPU is also the first to support hardware accelerated ray tracing in an iPhone. That means much more realistic games and augmented reality experiences. Paired with 8 gigs of RAM, iPhone 15 Pro Max benchmarked on average 5% faster for the CPU and 19% faster for the GPU compared to the 14 Pro Max running 6 gigs of RAM. 
Compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, iPhone 15 Pro Max benchmarked on average 71% faster for the CPU and 97% faster for the GPU. The A17 Pro also has faster 5G and Wi-Fi 6E. If there was ever an iPhone Pro Max worthy of upgrade, this is it. I'm a camera and video nerd, and I love my dedicated mirrorless and cinema cameras. But this is the first iPhone that has made me consider selling my professional gear and just buying multiple iPhone 15 Pro Maxes. And here's the five reasons why. Reason number one, the 48 megapixel primary camera offers a variety of essential focal lengths without any noticeable degradation in image quality. At the default 24 millimeter focal length, I can shoot a 24 megapixel or a 48 megapixel super high resolution photo. At 28 or 35 millimeter, I can shoot a 24 megapixel photo and with 2x optical zoom, I can shoot a 12 megapixel photo at a focal length of 48 millimeters. With just one camera, I can shoot a variety of wide and standard focal lengths. And by adding the 0.5x ultra wide, I can shoot ultra wide, wide, standard, and macro. The versatility and the compactness of this pro camera system is simply unmatched. I can literally fit every iPhone Pro Max in this camera bag versus just one regular camera and a standard zoom lens. Reason number two, the new 12 megapixel 5x telephoto camera opens up a world of possibilities for shooting wildlife, portrait, landscape, and products on iPhone. Just look at the difference between the 77mm telephoto focal length on the 14 Pro Max and the new 120mm focal length on the 15 Pro Max. Of course, we can desire an even longer focal length like 135 or even 200mm, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Telephoto lenses are very large because there needs to be enough separation between the lens and the sensor to enable the longer focal length. Obviously, the telephoto lens on the 15 Pro Max doesn't look any longer than the ultra-wide and wide lens. But that's because Apple used an innovative tetraprism design that bounces the light four times before hitting the sensor of the telephoto camera. This creates enough separation between the lens and the camera sensor to enable the 120mm focal length. Combining all three cameras, iPhone 15 Pro Max enables us to shoot ultra-wide, wide, standard, telephoto, and macro. With the new Pro Camera system on the 15 Pro Max, creating great work is no longer about the tools, but rather about our imagination and our skills. Reason number three, iPhone 15 Pro Max features next-gen portraits with focus and depth control. This new feature allows you to turn regular photos into a portrait after having been shot. On older iPhones, you had to decide if you wanted to shoot a portrait or not at the time of capture. With iPhone 15 Pro Max, you can now create a portrait in the edit. Now, it's because of these next two final reasons that I'm so close to selling my professional gear. Reason number four, iPhone 15 Pro Max with the new USB-C port allows you to record ProRes video to an external drive. My $4,000 Sony Cinema Line camera can't record ProRes and it can definitely not record to an external SSD. But this iPhone allows me to record high quality video up to 4K 60 FPS in an editing friendly format to this external SSD, which I can then plug into my Mac and immediately start editing in Final Cut Pro. This is an absolute game changer for my video production workflow. And reason number five, iPhone 15 Pro Max now supports native lock video recording. Without getting too technical, pro video creators tend to record video in logarithmic color space or lock for short. Log video has this flat, unsaturated look when it is captured in camera. So why bother with this ugly looking footage? Well, log video allows you to retain the most dynamic range of information from the camera sensor. This helps you retain information in the highlights and shadows as much as possible and gives you much more color data to work with in post-production. In the edit, you can transform the log video to a more linear color space, such as the commonly used Rec. 709. Rec. 709 is what most of us are used to seeing when watching YouTube or Netflix. But having recorded in lock, we now have maximum flexibility and creative control for color grading while retaining as much information in the video as possible. Most video and cinema cameras have support for log video. And now iPhone does too. I hope you can now understand my excitement for iPhone 15 Pro Max. The iPhone 15 Pro Max camera feels like the biggest leap in camera technology for iPhone. 
but let's put it next to every single other iPhone Pro Max to see how much progress has been made over the years. They say, oh my God, I see the way you shine. Take your hand, my dear, and bless them both in mine. You know you stopped me dead while I was passing by. And now I beg to see you dance just one more time. As an Apple fan, it is truly incredible to witness how much the flagship iPhone experience has evolved over time. iPhone has had a remarkable impact on mobile computing, and in my opinion, Apple not only reinvented the phone with iPhone, but also the camera. And if you're curious to see how Apple will reinvent the camera again, click here. I'll see you there.